Leadership law number ten: the law of connection. Leaders touch a heart before they ask for a hand. I love communicating. It's one of the joys of my life and one of my passions. Although I've spent more than thirty years speaking professionally, I'm always looking for ways to grow and keep improving in that area. That's why I try to see first-rate communicators in person when I get a chance. For instance, I made a trip to San Jose, California, to see an event sponsored by the local chamber of commerce. Speaking that day was an all-star cast of communicators. My favorite, who stood head and shoulders above the rest, was Elizabeth Dole. No doubt you know about Elizabeth Dole. She is a lawyer by trade, was a cabinet member in the Reagan and Bush administrations, and is now the president of the American Red Cross. She is a marvelous communicator. Her particular gift, which she demonstrated in San Jose that day, was making me and everyone else in her audience feel as though she was really our friend. The bottom line is that she really knows how to connect with people. In 1996, she demonstrated that ability to the whole country when she spoke at the Republican National Convention. If you watched it on television, you know what I'm talking about. When Elizabeth Dole walked out into the audience that night, they felt that she was their best friend. I also felt that connection, even though I was sitting in my living room at home watching her on television. Another kind of communicator also spoke at that convention: Bob Dole, Elizabeth's husband. That's not surprising, since he was the Republican nominee for president. Anyone who watched would have observed a remarkable difference between the communication abilities of those two speakers. Where Elizabeth was warm and approachable, Bob appeared stern and distant. Throughout the campaign, he never seemed to be able to connect with people. Many factors come into play in the election of the president of the United States, but not the least among them. Is the ability of a candidate to connect with his audience? A lot has been written about the Kennedy-Nixon debates of the 1960 election. One of the reasons Kennedy succeeded was that he was able to make the television audience feel connected to him. That same kind of connection developed between Ronald Reagan and his audiences. I believe Bob Dole is a good man, but I also know he never connected with people. Ironically, after the presidential race was over. He appeared on Saturday Night Live, a show that made fun of him during the entire campaign. On the show, Dole came across as relaxed, approachable, and able to make fun of himself, and he was a hit with the audience. I can't help wondering what might have happened if he would have done more of that early in the campaign. Effective leaders know that you first have to touch people's hearts before you ask for a hand. That is the law of connection. All great communicators recognize this truth and act on it almost instinctively. You can't move people to action unless you first move them with emotion. The heart comes before the head. Connecting with people isn't something that needs to happen only when a leader is communicating to groups. It needs to happen with individuals. That is one of the most important principles I've taught my staff over the years. At Skyline, my staff used to groan every time I would say. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, but they always knew that it was true. You develop credibility with people when you connect with them and show that you genuinely want to help them. The greatest leaders are able to connect on both levels, with individuals and with an audience. A perfect example was Ronald Reagan. His ability to develop rapport with an audience is reflected in the nickname he received as president, the Great Communicator. But he also had the ability to touch the hearts of individuals close to him. Former Reagan speechwriter Peggy Noonan said that when the president used to return to the White House from long trips, and the staff heard his helicopter landing on the lawn, everyone would stop working, and staff member Donna Elliot would say, "Daddy's home." It was an indication of the affection his people felt for him. Some leaders have problems with the law of connection because they believe that connecting is the responsibility of the followers. That is especially true of positional leaders. They often think, "I'm the boss. I have the position. These are my employees. Let them come to me." But successful leaders who obey the law of connection are always initiators. They take the first step with others and then make the effort to continue building relationships. That's not always easy. But it's important to the success of the organization. When a leader has done the work to connect with his people, 
You can see it in the way an organization functions. Employees display an incredible loyalty and a strong worth ethic. The vision of the leader becomes the aspiration of the people. The impact is incredible. You can also see the results of connection in other ways. For example, on Boss's Day 1994, a full-page ad appeared in USA Today. It was contracted and paid for by the employees of Southwest Airlines, and it was addressed to Herb Kelleher, the company's CEO. It said, Thanks, Herb, for remembering every one of our names, for supporting the Ronald McDonald House, for helping load baggage on Thanksgiving, for giving everyone a kiss, and we mean everyone, for listening, for running the only profitable major airline, for singing at our holiday party, for singing only once a year, for letting us wear shorts and sneakers to work, for golfing at the Love Classic with only one club, for out-talking Sam Donaldson, for riding your Harley Davidson into the Southwest headquarters, for being a friend, not just a boss, Happy Bosses Day from each one of your 16,000 employees. A display of affection like that occurs only when a leader has worked hard to connect with his people. Don't ever underestimate the importance of building relational bridges between yourself and the people you lead. There's an old saying, to lead yourself, use your head. To lead others, use your heart. That's the nature of the law of connection. Always touch a person's heart before you ask for a hand.